What's going on everyone, my name's Hayden and in this video I'm going to talk about my experience which I have very recently of seeing a nine figure Amazon seller. I spent the whole day with a nine figure Amazon seller. In this video I'm going to break down a few of the, the top lessons that I learned for your benefit. Enjoy the video. So if you don't know who I am, my name's Hayden. I've been selling for about four years on Amazon and I've just recently come to the realization that I really want to scale it up. So I went and saw a nine figure Amazon seller, a nine figure company owner with over a hundred employees that's been doing this for a long time. Straight out of the bat, I want to talk about exactly what I learned from them because it was quite frankly mind blowing. The biggest takeaway I got was how small people think. The majority of Amazon sellers think so, so small, you know, you're not even scratching the surface. This is including myself, you know. This month I might do, what, 70,000, something like that. I've got a goal in December for, what, 150, between 150 and 200,000. It's not even getting started. This guy, when I went there, you know, the last two days on his, on his seller app for one of his accounts, right, he's got multiple Amazon accounts, one of his accounts was 120 something thousand in, in each day. For Prime Day for the last two days. Did over 120,000 a day for one of his accounts. And that makes you realize how big this thinking is compared to most people. Most people are not thinking big enough. It's just true, you know. They're either caught in the in the race doing retail arbitrage or they've got a couple of VAs doing online arbitrage and they're stuck in their ways and they're just not scaling to the size that they want to, not scale, not taking the big enough risks, etc. So the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I got was just not thinking big enough. Thinking too small and just not giving yourself a chance to win big because you're thinking too small. And you know what? You get what you wish for. And if you're and if you're thinking too small and, and switching off at six and thinking that that's me done and you know we've hit thirty grand again this month and that's fine, then you're not going to go on someone like that's level. But if you've got goals for it, then you've got to do more than that. So thinking big was one of the biggest takeaways that I got. The second biggest thing that I got, the second biggest thing was understanding how much work goes into the systems behind the scenes of building a company like that. Right, let's talk practically now, right? Let's talk practically. This guy's got multiple warehouses shipping out hundreds of thousands of items a month. Hundreds of thousands of items a month from the looks of it, okay? I met loads of his staff members. I went to his warehouses, uh, like some of his warehouses. I met his office staff, his warehouse staff, etc. Great, happy environment. But if you look at the systems and the scale that this seller has got, you'll understand that half this business is mastering systems and not avoiding the hard work. I think most people's success that they really want is on the other side of hard work, right? That's one of the things that I realized recently and why I, why I reached out to a new mentor, etc. because I realized that it's time to do that hard work. And if you really want to scale a business big, if you really want to scale as an Amazon seller in a huge, huge way and make a huge company out of it, then you need the ability to have the correct systems and processes and staff members, etc., etc., in place so that you can facilitate that growth. Most people don't have that growth. That most people don't have that growth potential. Most people are working from themselves at home and they've got a, a little prep center that can't facilitate huge growth. You need to start working on them systems and operations sooner so that you can actually facilitate that growth and plan for it. Think about the work that goes into these systems and operations. It's a huge, huge thing. So that's the second lesson. How much work that it takes, you know, and, and the work that becomes in just staff systems processes rather than just trying to source products you know because let's say you open an account with a brand and you suddenly had access to 700 products have you got the money the facility the the prepping potential the staff to even facilitate that growth if you haven't then that leads me on to point three and point three is planning for that growth you know if, if there was a major thing that I learned was you need you need to know the plan of how you're gonna get big because for me I've been playing it a little bit too small and I've been launching products that have only got a certain amount of potential for me I want 
I want to have a business that has uncapped potential. Like, the, the guy's business that I went and saw does over 100 million. It's, it's hard to fathom how many sales that is. How many actual sales that is, okay? And that's just in Europe, right? That's not even these guys doing it in the USA. I do in the USA, but there's not these guys, you know, that there's a lot more growth to be had in the USA, some would argue, but not if you've got the right systems and procedures in the UK and you're selling the right products. So my point here being, you need to be in a model and you need to be selling products that have the potential. Well, a big downfall that I've had is not downfall. I mean, I've learned some great lessons from it. And it's done me well, etc., etc. I've just moved into this apartment here, whatever, paid for by Amazon. But I've always wanted a huge company. And the only reason that I don't is from the points that I'm talking about now. One of the main points being the model that I'm in and the speed in which I'm launching products and the type of um, uh, market that I'm in doesn't really allow for the sort of growth that this guy's got. Therefore, for me to do that, I need to pivot into a model, I need to pivot into types of products that, for, that can give me that growth, that can give me that volume of sales. I hope you're understanding that. So these three points that I've just mentioned, the thinking bigger, the having the systems and procedures set up, and also having the correct product, the correct model that you're in, put them all together, and you could have the potential for the same sort of growth that this guy's got. It, it, it was a very eye-opening, eye-opening day, you know. But if the demand's not there, the demand's not there, you know. Now, obviously, a lot of this comes down to funding. You know, you need to maybe take investment or, you know, keep reinvesting in the business as much as you can and not taking much profit, etc. It's going to take a long time. For me, it's probably going to be a funding route to a certain level, getting investors or whatever I have to do to get there. But thinking bigger, getting the systems and procedures set up and getting yourself into a model, a mindset, a model and a product or products that can facilitate huge growth. I think if you have them three points, you could be on to the same sort of growth that this guy's got in many, many years to come. It comes with a lot of discipline, a lot of discipline. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and see you next video.